Welcome to Shape of the City. I'm Jessie Coffey, your host. With summer break here, no school typically means no homework, and for some kids, no school can also mean little or no nutritious meals. And that's where the Summer Food Service Program comes in. Mike Heil from the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department and Beth Menhusen from Christ United Methodist Church are here to tell us all about their work in this very important program. So for Mike, what exactly is the Summer Food Service Program and how does it work? The Summer Food Service Program is basically an extension of the School Nutrition Services Program or what used to be called the School Lunch Program. During the school year, families that have low enough income qualify for either free or reduced meals and that helps out a lot of families get their children a nutritious meal a couple times a day. Some of the schools, they can get breakfast, lunch, a snack, even an evening meal. But when school lets out, we don't know if those low income kids are getting any food, let alone nutritious food. And so the Summer Food Service Program allows an organization like the Health Department to step in and sponsor summer food sites like Christ United Methodist Church, where kids can come and get a breakfast or a lunch, or in some sites, breakfast and lunch, uh, during that period when school lets out until it starts again. So how has the program grown over the years? since you've been involved? Fifteen years ago, um, when I picked up the program, the department's had it for the, about 37 or 38 years. Uh, Fifteen years ago, we were operating at about 25 sites. We fed kids for eight weeks, Monday through Friday, and we distributed a total of about 30,000 meals. Last summer, we operated for just short of 12 weeks. We uh, operated 42 sites, and we gave out just short of 102,000 meals. And as the city's grown, we've also seen a growth in our program. It kind of reflects what LPS has seen with their en enrollment. Uh, a few years ago, LPS's total enrollment uh, percentage of free and reduced was probably in the low 30% range. Uh, this last year, they were in the upper 40s out of all their students. So who is eligible for the program and how can the children participate? Any of our sites, uh, any of our 42 sites, or more possibly this summer, any child between the ages of 1 and 18 years of age can show up at a site during the operation. Uh, so each site has different serving times for breakfast and for lunch. Uh, most of our sites do breakfast and lunch, and a lot of the sites are tied into existing summer programs because that's the magnet for the kids mm -hmm. to come. Uh, just free food alone doesn't always draw the kids, but that supervision, that a chance to work with a mentor, like at a church or the Salvation Army or the, the Boys and Girls Club or a summer program at an elementary school. Uh, the kids show up during that time. They have uh, usually about a half hour to 45 minutes that they can get a breakfast. They have about one, to, uh, one hour to an hour and a half to get lunch. Uh, but they have to agree to stay on site and eat the meal. Uh, they can't share the meals. Uh, they have to take the whole meal, uh, and then they just come and have lunch and breakfast with us. Great. So why is a program like this so important in Lincoln? Lincoln has a significantly large number of low-income families. Um, we don't always see poverty. Lincoln hides its poverty very well. Uh, we know they're there. The schools, primarily the elementary schools, see the, the majority of it. Uh, but we are seeing more and more uh, middle schools and high schools that have over 50% of the enrollment for the whole building qualify for free and reduced. It's those boundaries that we want to get into. Uh, we know the kids are there. If LPS has an enrollment of, say, 40,000 kids, we know that upwards of 20,000 might be eligible. And during the summer, you know, we see 4,000 on a good summer. Uh, we could like, we would like to see more. We could definitely see more, um, but it's summertime and it's an unstructured time for the kids and they come and they go. Um, they don't always get drawn to the programs, uh, but the ones that can come to the programs, we like to help out. So this sounds like it's a lot of work and a lot of coordination. And so the health department probably can't do it all by yourself. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about some of your program partners? The biggest partner is Lincoln Public Schools. Uh, they work with us to develop menus that have to be approved by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, who oversees the program on the federal level. Uh, the Nebraska Department of Education Nutrition Services has dietitians that see, oversee the program at the state level. Uh, so working with those two right away as far as getting guidance for what we can and can't do, because the rules do change every summer, um, and getting the food made, those are probably the biggest ones. 
The other partners are places like Christ United Methodist Church, Boys and Girls Club, Salvation Army, a number of elementary and middle schools. Um, we do uh, park and rec sites, um, but those, those are the partners that, they're the really the young sung heroes because they're drawing the kids every day. They're mentoring the kids, they're working with the kids uh, on reading programs, math programs, recreational programs. Um, we just agree with them to bring them free food and if they can follow the USDA rules, we'd be more than happy to work with them to provide it but they have to be in those identifiable boundaries. We have to concentrate our efforts in those areas where there's a large number of low-income kids. And that's where we use the LPS boundaries. Uh, so having them identify those for us helps a ton. So now are children allowed to come by themselves or with a parent, does it matter? Some sites are drop-off sites. Uh, the kids are there first thing in the morning when the staff shows up. Uh, other sites, parents are there while the kids eat they'll leave and then they'll come back with the kids. A lot of it just kind of depends on the family situation and on the site in the neighborhood. Uh, some of our neighborhoods uh, where we have overlapping of schools, like up in the northwest part of town, we've got Goodrich Elementary that has a large number of kids that qualify. We have Belmont Elementary that has a large number of kids that qualify and we have uh, Campbell Elementary. I'll have uh, feeding sites at Lauren Isley Library, Campbell, Belmont Elementary, Belmont Community School, and Goodrich Elementary uh, because between staff and size and time they can't possibly feed 1,200 kids that live in that neighborhood. But the smaller sites can get those kids in and, and that helps. Great. So for Beth, how long has Christ United Methodist Church been involved with the program? This is the second year that Christ UMC has been participating in the program. And where are you located and who do you typically see coming into your facility to participate in the program? So we're at 45th and A Streets uh, here in Lincoln and we typically see the kids that are involved in our summer daycare program as well as uh, kids that walk to us from the neighborhood, sometimes with parents. And then how many kids do you see on a given day for breakfast and then for lunch? Uh, we just serve lunch right now at our site and we see about 30 kids each day that come for lunch. And what has been the response you've seen from both children and their families um, about the program now that you're sort of newly offering it at mm -hmm. your location? Yeah, everybody seems really pleased uh, with, with the program. They like coming and having a nice space to eat lunch in and a cool place with air conditioning mm -hmm. is what I've heard from a lot of them. Uh, it was really neat. Last summer we had a family come in that they came for lunch, but then they found our church library and they uh, started checking out books every day and talking to the staff and they really appreciated uh, that opportunity as well. Yeah, that's a great enrichment opportunity yeah. for families. Um, what barriers do you see that keep children from coming to the program? Um, in your area? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest barrier is probably just knowing that it's there. Um, we're excited Mike got us a big sign to put in our front yard this year, <laughs> so hopefully that gets the word out a little more. Um, and also transportation. I think some parents, probably rightly so, are uncomfortable with kids walking by themselves, sure. but then kids might not have another way to get there if mom and dad are at work during the day. Um, so, so getting the kids there is, I think, the biggest challenge. One of the biggest challenges we see across all of our sites is actually the benefit of summer. Um, summer's a very unstructured time. They don't have to be to school at a specific time. Uh, they don't have to stay on campus all day. And a lot of these kids come from unsupervised homes. Uh, the parents are working different hours, different shifts. Uh, and during the summer, they're basically told, go ahead and entertain yourself mm -hmm. and they don't know about programs like at Christ United Methodist or our other sites and so the kids aren't under that guidance to come and be there for a certain amount of time and so they might start off they end up at a friend's house or they sleep in and they miss a breakfast serving time um, that's a rule we'd like to see go away that we could just have food on site and then when the kids show up they'd have a choice of things to eat uh, but right now the rules as they are at the federal level, there's a designated serving time for breakfast and another serving time for lunch. And the kids aren't always uh, punctual mm -hmm. about coming at those times. Sure. Uh, so where can viewers go to find out about all the different sites that are located across Lincoln um, and those very important serving times that mm -hmm. each site has? The City of Lincoln through the, uh, and the Lincoln, of Lanc Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department through the City of Lincoln has a web page. Uh, you can go to the Health Department's web page, click on Summer Food, it'll have a listing of the sites, 
it'll have the site supervisor's names and phone numbers. And if kids have never gone to a site, we encourage them to call mm -hmm. ahead. Um, our site supervisors get comfortable knowing that 30, 35 kids are gonna show up and then five more show up and they're scrambling to find the food to cover it uh, because they're very efficient in what they order. They don't wanna have a lot of extra food sitting around and getting wasted or spoiled. So they control their numbers. Um, but go to, calling a site, telling them that you're going to come, uh, start coming is a good way. We also have a map that you can click on and see all the sites. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I would tell you we have probably 42 for this summer, but if the late coming ones get certified by the state, there may be as many as 50 sites across Lincoln this summer, which would be the biggest summer we've ever had. That's an amazing number. Wow, mm -hmm. exciting. Well, I want to thank both of you for the great work that you're doing to feed kids in the summer. And good luck in all your efforts with the summer food program. Thank you. Thanks. When we return, we'll talk about how playing in the park means more fun for everyone. What if you could add five years to your child's life and make your whole family healthier with simple changes? Partnership for Healthy Lincoln wants to help you and your family live longer, healthier lives. It's easier than you think. Take the dog for a walk. Play more and text a little less. Swap out a soda for water once a day. Keep fruits and veggies handy for snacking. For more ideas, visit HealthyLincoln.org. Welcome back to Shape of the City. School is out and the weather is perfect for getting outside. When you do get out, it's very likely you will end up at one of the 125 public parks not, or nine pools managed by Lincoln Parks and Recreation. In addition, they also run seven recreation centers five golf courses, and 133 miles of trails. What else? They have fun and healthy programs available across the city all summer. Melissa Linderman from Parks and Recreation is here to tell us more about the exciting activities that are available this summer. Great. We are excited uh, to be kicking off our summer. Um, we have two initiatives that we have started. This is our third year for our party in the park and the second year for play in the park. These are all free activities for anyone in the community. Super. Um, why don't you give us a big picture about the types of programs and activities going on through Links and Park, park and Recreation this summer? Yeah. Um, we have our play in the park series which are all free um, series focusing on wellness and fitness. Um, we partner with the Community Health Endowment to offer the Move More Lincoln wellness series. That starts um, Tuesday, May 30th, and will run through Labor Day weekend. Um, we have everything from boot camp to dynamic movement with aging partners, um, yoga on Saturday mornings and Zumba, just a lot of really fun activities. These um, classes are really geared for anyone, any, any adult. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're a beginner or you're um, in an advanced group, it's just fun to come out and it's at Jane Snyder Trail Center, which is a great location. Um, we also once a month offer canoeing at Holmes Lake and that is a great time for families to come out enjoy the beautiful park. We have lots of families that started bringing a picnic um, and then they get a chance to go out on the canoes and just get a chance to see what it's all about. Um, we have eight summer day camps. Our theme is Fundamental Healthy Me. So kids spend Monday through Friday really being active. Um, going swimming, playing tennis, doing yoga, and just lots of fun games all summer long. So there is really something for everyone. To find out more about camps or classes or team sports, where can viewers go to find more information about those, uh, all the things that you just mentioned? Yeah. They can visit our website at Lincoln. Wait, parks.lincoln.ne.gov, um, and you can click on the parks um, website to go to the Party in the Parks or the Play in the Park series. And then you can also find out about all of our team sports, golf, um, there's information on the trails, as well as um, team sports. Great. Uh, tell us about some of the events like the Party in the Park. Um, is, that new, is that a newer program? Have you, how long have you been doing yep. that? Party in the Park has been going on for five years. Um, it is really an opportunity to showcase uh, our beautiful parks, um, focusing on music and the arts. That series turns into Stransky, the Stransky Park series that's at Stransky Park on Thursday evenings. 
Um, then just a lot of different activities throughout the summer with the um, Lincoln Municipal Band is at the Band Shell at Antelope Park and all of those schedules are on our website as well. The pools open Memorial Day weekend and are open through mid-August. Um, last year Star City Shores added a new pool or a new slide to their pool so that's been really exciting. Um, it's just a great time for kids to go out and have fun, um, cool down, and we also are offering some water fitness classes at a few of the pools this summer. Those um, schedules are also on our website, so some other great, great ways to cool off and uh, enjoy the pools. And then are you partnering with um a certain organization to provide swimming lessons as well at the pools? Um, Parks and Recs offers uh, swimming lessons uh, through our own department and they are um, Red Cross certified. All right. And those also times and availability are available? They're, they're on the website as well. All right. So also it sounds like you have a program called Crunch for Lunch uh -huh. that you'll be starting as well. Can you explain yeah. how that works a little bit? Crunch and Lunch is a program at Peter Pan Park. It is run through our AmeriCorps members. They um, are at the park at 9 in the morning. They serve breakfast and then from 9.30 to noon we do lots of fun activities, keeping kids active, um, doing some enrichment opportunities. We bring in some guest speakers to come and talk to the kids and then we serve lunch at noon. It is completely free. Um, we do ask that all of the kids register. You can do that on our website just so we have a good feel for the numbers and we have contact information and that sort of thing, but it is open to anyone. You can come one day, you can come every day. It's Monday through Friday, um, the entire 11 weeks of summer. And where is Peter Pan Park Peter located? Peter Pan Park is located at 33rd and Y Street. All right, very good. Um, so for families, if they are wanting to do some things, uh, mm -hmm. What types of things would you recommend that they look at then this summer? Um, for families, I would really recommend the canoeing. Um, families loved that. It is something a lot of kids haven't had an opportunity to do. And we have uh, six canoes that we'll have out in the water. Some basic instruction, just come and enjoy the beautiful park. But there is lots to do in the parks without structured activities. There's wonderful playgrounds. There's lots of bike trails to hike or go on a bike ride um, and just get out and be active. So with 133 miles of uh, trails mm -hmm. across Lincoln, where can people identify something that's close to them? Um, if you go on the website, there's the trail map and it will show you where um, all of the parks are located. Another great resource is to go out to the Nature Center. Mm -hmm. There's lots of miles of hiking out there and you can always find a new trail or something new to do. Um, but with, park, with that many parks in Lincoln, there's one close to everybody. Great. Uh, Melissa, why do you think parks and recreation programs and activities are so valuable to the community? There's something for everyone, whether you're three or a hundred. There's activities that we have for everyone to enjoy, whether it's just getting out, um, going to a park and reading a book or being active with um, your kids or your grandkids. Um, we have wonderful golf courses and everything is very reasonably priced for anyone to enjoy. Um, so we've got activities that are free um, as well as some paid programs. So it's just there's something for everyone. Great, that's exciting, and it's it's wonderful to hear that there's so much available here in Lincoln this yeah. summer. We're excited to get the summer kicked off. Thank you so much for your um, coming on the show, and I can't wait uh, to get out and enjoy some of the parks and trails myself this summer. Stay tuned to learn more about fun summer activities right here in Lincoln. I'm a driver. I'm a cyclist. And I share the road. Hi, my name is Andrea Foss. I'm the coordinator of the Pioneers Park Nature Center. Uh, the Nature Center is a fantastic place to explore this summer. We've got lots of great activities going on. The trails are always open to explore. Uh, we do also have some special events that people can take advantage of. And we've got guided hikes, we've got Saturdays with a naturalist, and that happens once a month on Saturdays. Uh, we have our Nature Trekkers program that will be taking place in June, and that's Wednesdays from 10 to 11 a.m. We also have summer camps at Wilderness Nature Camp here at Camp Discovery at the Nature Center. 
For adults, we have our rain garden classes, a origami class, herb container uh, class, so you can make an arrangement of different herbs. I also encourage you just to come out on your own. During the summer, we are actually gonna be open late on Tuesdays. Uh, we will have the south side of the Nature Center that's usually closed at five o'clock. We'll be open until 8 p.m. Tuesdays, uh, Memorial Day through Labor Day. We also have some really cool fundraisers going on through the Friends of the Pioneers Park Nature Center. Our Friends group is going to be hosting uh, the Beer, Brats and Bikes event on Saturday, June 10th. It's going to be a casual trail ride going from Van Dorn Park out to the Pioneers Park Nature Center. Then right across this bridge here, which is part of the Haynes Branch Prairie Corridor, we're going to head to a crushed limestone trail. Along the way, we're going to learn a little bit about the Prairie Corridor, uh, prairie restoration efforts that are going on in the Nature Center. Then we'll return to Van Dorn Park and check out White Elm Brewing Company for some beer tasting, followed by a party lunch and some more beers at Blue Blood Brewing Company. Later in the summer, the Friends will be hosting the Mystery on the Prairie, which is a murder mystery dinner theater that's definitely worth checking out. These two events, you can find out more information at lnknaturecenter.org. The Pioneers Park Nature Center events are all available at parks.lincoln dot ne dot gov slash nature center. I encourage you just to come out. My favorite thing to do out here, go for a walk and listen to the birds. I think it's fantastic. Hi, I'm Roger Hirsch. I'm co-chairman of uh, Trail Trek uh, for 2017. This year's event will be held June 25th, uh, the last Sunday in June. We've uh, consistently held trail trek events every year since the year 2002 in Lincoln. Uh, these are fundraising events. We, uh, we charge an admission for uh, participants and all the proceeds of it, uh, less some uh, expenses, go to uh, develop or to maintain the current trails. It is a, a family oriented event. We don't use it for races. We use it to encourage families and their children to come out and ride the trails. We encourage all other people to uh, ride the trails. We attempt to use the event to introduce the city's riders uh, to new portions of the trails and uh, simply to introduce them to uh, new neighborhoods. We get, uh, oh, approximately a thousand bikers, uh, including volunteers, uh, pretty much every year. And of course, we're always trying to build those numbers. We usually break it down into about four trails. Uh, and they change every year. This year we have a trail that's 11 miles long and it's usually constructed for families uh, with small children. They might have them in the carriers or the children themselves might have small bikes. The next uh, route we have uh, that goes straight out to Pioneers Park. It'll go all the way to Pinewood Bowl. There will be entertainment there and then it just comes straight back along the trail. Then we have a 25 mile trail. We'll start at uh, Haymarket Park and it will follow the Rock Island Trail and come around to the uh, Old Cheney Road Trail and then come right here to Holmes Lake Park where in this particular um, facility we'll have a SAG stop, a support and gear stop for them. Then it will go back downtown uh, along the Billy Wolf Trail and it will meet up with then the 11 mile trail somewhere in the vicinity of the Jane Snyder Trail Center. Then our monster trail is the 45 miler that'll take very experienced riders from uh, Haymarket Park down to the community of Cortland, Nebraska and uh, we will meet in the city park. There'll be entertainment there and they will also serve a lunch there. Lunch is also served for the riders on all trails uh, at Haymarket Park. And the big, uh, very popular part of it is we will have a giveaway of, uh, it'll be a total of uh, 17 bicycles at Haymarket Park. The best way to register for the event is go to the Great Plains Trails Network uh, website, which is gptn.org. And there are links there to um, Trail Trek if people want to be a volunteer during Trail Trek, we can always use volunteers and they can volunteer through that website also. We can take registrations up to and including the day of the event. However, if uh, participants want 
one of the t-shirts, uh, I'm wearing one of last year's t-shirts, uh, if they want one of those, they have to register up to uh, about a week ahead of the event. They can still register afterwards, but we cannot provide them a t-shirt then. Bring your kids, uh, bring your water bottles, uh, be prepared to have a lot of fun and uh, meet some new people and, and experience Lincoln's trails. Shape of the City is dedicated to helping Lincoln stay informed of health and wellness programs and events. Visit our calendar at lincoln.ne.gov, keyword 10 health. If you'd like to see your event covered, email us at 10healthlincoln at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Until next time, get active, eat healthy, and stay informed. Thank you.